So this is in response to comment ID 134404 regarding a proposal by the Federal Reserve Board regulatory capital treatment of land development loans definition high volatility commercial uh, real estate exposure R-1669. I'm only going to read the first part because this comment specifically for this time frame is going to uh, address information that was brought up in the first part. Prior to the onset of the banking bailout, people in at least Chicago had plenty of forewarning of the dangers of house flipping. Real estate schemes have been reported on in the news for years. In fact, during the summer of 2008, there was much press about two specific political candidates that were implicated in an investigation that ended up being prosecuted. However, when one of them got the Democratic Party nomination for president, his name disappeared from the public notices about the investigation and the other, well, there were other issues. This is not such a different situation. High volatility commercial real estate exposure in consideration of the residential real estate market belies more than your policy wants to address forthrightly. For years, there has been an effort engaged at various levels of intensity to launder assets through federal programs for health and human services, as well as emergency or public housing. We get lip service about certain specific individuals who might be well-timed for recharacterization, but no real assistance in staunching the aberrant economic policies that have served to undermine the U.S. and others since the alleged bailout of the banks. I have attempted to use public comments to get some resolution regarding long-standing issues of economic malfeasance after years of witnessing my reports to regulatory and law enforcement agencies just get flipped to line item appropriations, underwriting, or risk assessments for various large-scale security instruments and investment paradigms. I'm just going to uh, introduce that there um, and discuss that. This is a, a, actually a very substantial public comment, um, and there's a lot that it ends up referencing and speaking about that as part of my ongoing investigation and what would have been what I would have attempted to pursue through the legal system in terms of redress for criminal charges connected to this pattern of racketeering activity. Um, but concurrent with me trying to follow through on uh, acknowledging the time frames, um, this specific uh, comment was dated for August 21st of 2019. So today is the one year uh, since this comment was put, ma uh, uh, proposed and made uh, public that there has recently been an announcement that uh, Republicans, specifically connected to the Intelligence Committee um, in uh, Congress and, and specifically in the Senate, have uh, wound up or finished uh, an investigation they had into allegations of interference in the presidential campaign of uh, President Donald Trump. And the reason I bring this up is because when I am discussing these matters regarding the 2008 house flipping, a lot of that was specifically about calibration in connection with the 2008 presidential election. And one of the things I've personally experienced, and I believe I am not alone, and I've actually observed it in, in through other people, is that in 2008 there were a number of political candidates um, who were attempting to run either independently or they were trying to run with the Green Party. Especially in Chicago, it was specifically understood that there was a need to present a uh, opposition to the Democratic Party entrenchment, um, and then hopefully there would be some people that would be able to get enough votes to go to Congress in order to begin a process to create um, actual political dissent within the uh, Congress and the Senate. Um, but I believe many of those people and myself included even though i did not run at the time i was supporting a candidate who did i believe they were politically disappeared and i believe that part of what happened with the rollout of the affordable care act is that certain of us were specifically targeted for political retaliation and i actually believe that right now what has been going on for the last three years in connection with these allegations of russian hacking and in connection with allegations of spies is that people in the United States, including people that were born citizens of the United States, but that not agree with or accede to explicitly understood illicit activity that was being promoted by people in the Democratic Party, even if it was supposed to be on a sort of low level with an understanding that at a later point in time there would be policy change or material conditions that would change to make that previously illicit activity illicit. 
people who did not agree to cooperate with this, people that were actually political dissenters, and people that did not want to cooperate with defamation and desecration of people in other countries being misrepresented as being um, involved in criminal or terroristic activity so that people domestically could attempt to expropriate foreign assets for reappropriation for their own use, including intangible assets. I believe we were targeted. Some of us were disappeared. Some of us were tortured. And I think and understand that what has happened since the allegations of Russian interference in Hillary Clinton's campaign that what was really going on was an attempt to quiet any dissent within the United States that would have exposed the pervasive level of organized criminal activity that was a part of, in some manner, way, shape, or form, both the Trump and the Clinton campaigns, and that had been accruing and had been accumulating for a substantial amount of time but specifically during the administration of Barack Obama and specifically in the manners in which it intersected with the Affordable Care Act. And so now with the release of, inf with this report that's been released and specifically with the discussions about the allegations trying to focus on uh, election interference in uh, Donald Trump's campaign, there's a couple of other events that are happening concurrently um, that are a part of what it seems to be a sort of de-escalation of certain tactics that have been used over the last year. But my concern is that people in this country, including people that may be first generation or may actually be immigrants, uh, including from the former Soviet Union um, or from other countries, were specifically targeted through completely contrived and fake FISA proceedings, especially in ex parte, so that they could be dispossessed of their personal private property and political rights and have it expropriated for recirculation to other people who have basically been lying about their qualifications, their capabilities, and are doing what they can to co-conspire in what is currently an attack upon the planet using biological weapons. And so we're in a very significant situation here, and I absolutely believe that it's more relevant than ever to go back and investigate what was really going on, specifically during the 2008 presidential campaign that ended up disappearing an entire movement of political dissent and entire movements for political organizing within the United States. In 2017, there were several articles I read, one specifically discussed, that after President Obama got to the White House, that the organizations that had agreed to support his campaign automatically got consumed within and subsumed into a sort of party organization that was actually specifically an Obama-related organization in a manner that harvested and expropriated their political campaign or their political efforts on local levels and also appropriated them specifically for Obama per se as opposed to whatever the specific social issues were that they were involved in. There are some currently publicly accessible information about the Obama administration's use of this concept of econometrics and how it factored into the campaign tactics. But my concern is that what happened specifically is that people who were a part of the Green Party, either at the time of the election or previously, were allowed to have their identities appropriated by members of the Democratic Party so that they could get green bonded to long-term securities deals that were themselves transitions or flips on securities deals that had already come due, including deals that were set up prior to the presidential uh, uh, administration of President Bill Clinton and that were attempted for a long-term process of recharacterization in order to expropriate political capital from movements and individuals that were critics of both the Democratic and the Republican Party so that they could be subordinated, subsumed, and coerced into a cedence to relinquishing their political capital to certain people within the Democratic Party. And what we've actually seen in the last several years is that people in the Democratic Party have been allowed to emerge as political candidates based on forgeries created by people 
who used to be politically active in other milieus and did not agree to cooperate with the criminal conspiracy at the heart of the Democratic Party for the last 10 years or more.